Welcome back to the shop. I'm Kirk Anderson. Now in this week's project, I'll be making a 3D relief carving on my Onefinity CNC machine. Now the relief carving that I'll be doing here is the military insignia, and it's one that's very dear to my heart. Now, I did not create the file for this carving. This is something that I purchased from the website CNC Military Emblems. Now, I spent 20 years in the Navy, and half of that time, I was on submarines. And so the relief carving that I'm going to do is the submarine dolphins, or the fish as we call them. Now, I'm not going to say that they have basically every known military emblem under the sun, but they have a lot of them. Now there's one I'm looking for, the Submarine Warfare Pin. And I like the Vietnam era one the best. So that's the one I'm going with. And of course it's not free, it does cost something. It's a whopping $25 for one file. Or you can get the three different designs of each one for $50. So a savings of $25. Now, of course, once you purchase it, it's just a matter of downloading the file and then you can upload it into the program that you're going to create your G code with, which the program that I'm using is Carveco Maker. Now, once you open up Carveco Maker, click on new model. Now, the piece of wood that I'm using is 12 and a half inches by three and a half inches. I'll keep the resolution at the maximum. And then the units of measurements will be inches. And then I'll keep the starting point at the lower left. And then just hit OK to create a new file. Now the first thing we want to do is import the 3D model. And that's very simple. Just go up to Relief, click on it, click on Import, and Import 3D Model. That will bring up a window. Now I'm already in the folder that has the file I want. Now just click on the file and then click on open and we'll open up the file. Now let's move that over to the side so we can see what we're doing. Now if you look at the bottom of the window, it says that the file size is 32 inches by nine and a half inches. Now that's a little bit bigger than the piece of wood I'm using. Now the first thing I want to do, I want the Y axis size to be three inches. So I'll just type in three there and the rest of the axis will automatically scale to that three inches. And that looks much better. The only thing is, it's not centered on the piece of wood. That's real easy to do. Just go back over to the window and hit center. And there it is, centered on what would be the piece of wood. But it's not permanent yet. We need to do one more thing to make it be permanent on there. We need to paste it. Now once it's pasted, you can close the window box and the relief will stay there. Now let's just get a closer look at this 3D relief model. Now I'm pretty happy with it. The only thing I want, I want it a little bit taller. So I'll go to scale relief and then it's right at about 0.4 inches and I want it at a half an inch. Just type in 0.5, apply, and then exit out of that box. And there, it's a little bit taller now. Now I'll be carving this out of a piece of red oak that's three quarters of an inch thick. Now it's time to create the tool paths. The first thing I want to do, I want to bring up the project window. And in the project window, we have tool paths. Just click on that and then go down to 3D Toolpath and create a Machine Relief Toolpath. The first thing we want to import is the finishing options. Now I'm going to be finishing this with a 1 8 inch bull nose. Now because it's such a small bit, it's going to take a while to machine this, but it also means 
that there's going to be very little or no sanding required after it's machined. Okay, next is roughing options. We want to rough out the majority of the material before we get to the 1 8 inch ball nose bit. So go up to roughing and 2D finishes, and I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill for the roughing. Now even though the finishing bit is on top, it's actually the second tool that we're going to be using. So I just need to number that a different tool number than the other one, so I'll just number it tool number 2. Now let's just check the safe Z, and it's at 1 inch, so that's where I want it. And now let's define what the material is. And it's coming up at a half an inch, but it's not. We want the material at three quarters of an inch or 0.75. And then just hit OK. Now everything's looking good so far. There's about a quarter of an inch of material below the relief, which is what I want. And there's about a half an inch of relief. So it's looking good to me. So now all we do is hit calculate now and it will create the tool paths. And depending on how complex the tool paths are, it takes a little while for it to calculate the tool paths. Now for the 1 8 inch ball nose, I had it step over at 0 .005 inches. So there's going to be a lot of passes on that. So that's why it's going to take so long. That's also why it's going to have almost a smooth finish. There's going to be very little to zero sanding required. Now one thing that I do want to change, even on the roughing out, I don't want to rough out the entire board. So I'm going to create a relief boundary that's only about a quarter of an inch out from the relief and that is the only area that's going to be milled. So on the top menu, click on vectors and then go down to create and under create go to relief boundaries and click on that. Now, if there's a box clicked on there, just unclick it and then hit Create Boundary. And the boundary is created. Now, in order to use that boundary, what we need to do, we need to offset it. And the offset key is down on the left-hand side. Once you click on that, you just pull it out until you have the distance that you want. Like I said, I want it right out about a quarter of an inch. And then once the relief boundary is set, we go back into the tool path, and then under the area to machine, we change it from whole relief to selected vectors. And it'll come up with a warning, but that's no problem. It's just telling you that the center of the tool will cut to the vector boundary, not the outside of the tool. And then just hit create. And there again, it's going to take a little while to create it. As you can see, it's only creating the tool paths within the boundary. It's not cutting the entire piece. Now, once it's all machined, I want to be able to cut it out. So that's what we're going to do next. Under the project window, hit tool paths, go down to 2D tool paths, and create profile tool path. Now we want it on the outside of the selected vectors. And the tool that we're going to be using, we'll use the quarter inch end mill again. Well, what do you know? I made a mistake. I didn't actually select the vector. So just hit OK, select the vector. And let's recalculate. There it goes. So there's a tool path for cutting out the relief. 
and under simulation, that's what the final cut would look like. So everything is done. All we need to do is save the G code that's so we can bring it over to the CNC machine. Now the way I always do it, I do save it to my computer and then I copy that file to a thumb drive. And there it is, it's saved to the computer. So I'll just copy to the thumb drive, then bring it over to the CNC. Now the first thing I'm gonna do, I'll be zeroing out all the axes to the piece of wood I'll be carving. And the Onefinity does have an accessory probe that makes this really simple to do. Now once it's all zeroed out, it's a matter of loading in the files and then starting the machine. The very beginning here, I do not have the dust collecting boot on there and I really didn't realize how effective that little thing is until I started this. It is truly effective, but I wanted to show a little bit of the machining without the boot on there. And I did just that. I showed a little bit of it and then I put the boot back on because it was getting quite dusty. And here we're shaking a little bit. And the reason is because the machine is working pretty good. And we're doing the rough cuts now. Now all the roughing out is done and we're using the 1 8 inch ball nose bit to actually do the carving. Now from start to finish on the CNC machine itself, this entire project took about two and a half hours to carve out. And now the carving is done and we're using the quarter inch bit to cut out the piece. Now in order that the piece would stay secured once it got cut out, I used that trick with painter's tape and super glue to keep the piece from moving. And there it is. Now the surface of it needs very little or no sanding. There is a little sanding that's needed around the edges. And there she is, ready for a finish. I'm not sure if I'm gonna stain it or just put a finish on it. I might stain it to bring out a little bit more of the wood grain, but I am really, really pleased with how it came out. Now this piece ended up about three inches high and about 10 inches long. Now with this CNC machine, I could make it to a maximum of about two and a half feet long, which would be about 10 inches high. Now, if I made that carving, that carving would probably take a whole day to carve, carving it out at 0.005 inches step over. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you would, give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always, all you woodworkers out there, just get out there and cut some wood.